welcome in this video i am going to explain unit root test unit root testing using dicky fuller test augmented dicky fuller test little about philips perron test and i will drive augmented dicky fuller equations uh, in, in 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 the next video so what are unit root tests we we see that why we call a series stationary or not non stationary what is i1 what is i0 what is i of d so if a series is basically differenced once and it becomes stationary we call the original series as integrated of order 1 integrated of order 1 means a series is basically non stationary and after taking its first difference it becomes stationary and we call it integrated of order 0 in general a series if it being difference d times we call it it's integrated of order d usually in economics we have i have series i either i1 or it is i2 means after taking the second difference it becomes stationary and a series which is stationary without differencing that is called i0 integrated of order 0 means stationary series so what do we say here yt equal to b not this is constant or drift parameter this coefficient is 1 this coefficient is 1 so it means series is series as unit root series as unit root i can write it as yt minus yt minus 1 equal to b not plus epsilon t what does this mean i can write it as 1 minus l times y l is basically lag operator b not plus epsilon t so 1 minus l equal to 0 l equal to 1 it means series there is unit root there is uh, its root is 1 so if i take its difference it's it's basically drift plus random component i0 no you see in this case series is basically it has no constant mean it's a non stationary series because it does not have a mean constant for this one if i take mean in this range 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 so it it cannot be represented by a single mean in this on the right hand side this series has variance which is changing over time so you see mean is constant around 0 but there is there is a more variability here than here so our condition for stationarity is mean is constant variance is constant covariance is also uh, not function of time so here we have violation of constant variance so these both these series are non stationary uh, look here in this case when we take the uh, when we consider this series whether after taking difference or not we see all this the, it has mean constant variance is almost constant and there is no uh, auto correlation you cannot determine that what next series will be right a, a great uh, basically uh, if series are correlated then you can have a smoothing pattern like this way no uh, and it's auto correlation you see it is within plus minus two standard errors so all its auto correlations are within so it it does not have it has mean constant variance constant its correlation is not there but in this case series has mean not constant and auto correlation is not within plus minus two standard errors so this series is non stationary so uh, this b basically this determines whether series is stationary or not if b is 1 we say there is unit root root is 1 so b is equal to 1 this is your null hypothesis b is less than 1 or i should say b in absolute terms should be less than 1 that is b can be between minus 1 and plus 1 so it is stationary and your test statistics is equal to b minus 1 over standard error of b so and critical value basically this critical value is not valid we'll will come to know why it's the case so simple t based test has some issues first that 
its dependent variable is there. So if residuals are correlated with its past values, your test statistics will be your your coefficient will be biased downward. You can you can uh, we can discuss these things at some other stage. This is first issue. Second issue is that series is non-stationary, and when series is non-stationary, so our standard statistical distributions does not apply. Our standard statistical theory does not apply. So in this case, we have non-standard distribution. So it means we cannot have a we cannot have standard error of B head as a, as as a single value, or it's it's not a, it's not an appropriate measure. To, to get the critical values, okay, uh, to get basically correct statistics and of, uh, to, to do this, we have to take different critical values will come shortly, come to know shortly. So what I'm going to do here that yt and we are going to subtract yt minus one from both sides. So instead of testing h not b equal to zero, b equal to one, we are basically taking it as b equal, uh, equal to zero. So b minus 1 into yt that is equal to beta. So beta is b1 minus b, 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 b minus 1, not b1. So b minus 1 yt. So here we are testing you know, the same thing. b minus 1 is now equal to beta, which means we are testing beta equal to 0, which is the same as b equal 1. So now our null hypothesis h naught beta equal zero. This means series is non-stationary. Null hypothesis is always in non-stationary. Series is non-stationary, and beta less than zero means series is stationary. Now we have three cases. The first case is there is this is pure random walk model. We say no drift parameter, and if b is zero. It is a unit root test. We call it pure random walk model. This is a case when you have drift parameter there. So this is a random walk. This is a random walk with drift parameter. And you have deterministic trend here as well. So if trend is there, deterministic term, this drift uh, term will be there. So you use either of these three models. The first one is called pure random walk. Second is random walk with drift. And third one is called drift and deterministic trend. Then comes how we apply this Dickey Fuller test. Basically, uh, uh, H naught uh, beta is equal to zero. That is your series is non-stationary. So either you have this situation or this situation or you have trend term. So if we are just testing beta equal to zero in this case, we use TOS statistics. I'll explain. In this case, if you want to see that B naught and beta both equal to zero, so you apply F test, but we call it 5-1 statistics. And in this case, this, this statistics is called ta mu. In standard statistical theory, we have always T statistics. But in this case, if its beta is equal to zero, if beta is equal, if there is no drift parameter, we call it ta statistics because critical values are different. In this case, we call it ta mu because its critical value is different. I'll explain these things uh, just, just in a moment. And if you have th th this ta mu statistics, this ta mu statistics, uh, I think table will be in the next slide. Okay, no. Critical value, standard critical value is minus 6.1 points, but the Dickey Fuller critical value is minus 3.0. Similarly, McKinnon people have also calculated critical values. So, the, so the main difference is using a critical value different than your standard T statistics. Because T statistics is not valid because your standard statistical distributions are not valid here. So, in this case, if B naught drift parameter beta whether beta is equal to zero means unit root beta two this is trend epsilon t this is your equation no if you have you are testing in first case h naught beta equal to zero it's ta if you are testing with drift it's ta mu if you are testing with trend it's ta ta ah, this this table will explain 
so if you are testing beta equal to 0 when drift and trend parameter both are there beta equal to 0 your critical value will be your test statistics will be called tata and your critical values are here but same beta equal to 0 when you test it in this where you have drift term we call it ta mu we call it ta mu so your critical values are different in both scenarios whereas in standard statistical distribution in standard econometric models irrespective whatsoever your variables are on the right hand side your t statistics value critical value remains same in this case when v naught is equal to 0 beta is equal to 0 test statistics is this one both b2 and this is equal to 0 test statistics is this one if b is equal to beta 2 equal to 0 means this is 0 this is 0 so we call it phi 3 if all 3 equal to 0 beta b naught b2 we call it phi 2 it's it's just like f test but your critical values are different same is the case critical values are different and if there is no drift term we have ta here what's the difference critical values are different from this one and from this one so main difference is that which form of model you are using this one this one or this one main difference is where calculation t statistics we use t statistics beta hat minus zero divided by but we call it ta in ta in this case ta mu in this case ta ta in this case as critical values are different augmented dq fuller test so when we have applied this test delta y t equal to beta y t minus 1 and we have tested coefficient of this y t minus 1 please note it down we are testing y t minus 1 which is just like y t is just one value less than the total y t is one leg we are testing beta there was an issue that epsilon t's were correlated so people raised objection that dk and fuller test has an issue that they, they have an assumption that epsilon t's should be uncorrelated but if they are correlated then this dk fuller test will not be applicable instead of using dk fuller test dk and fuller have augmented this the, their model with lagged of dependent variables so delta t y t to overcome autocorrelation we add these lags here we add these lags here and we usually write this model in standard uh, uh, notation mathematical notation b naught plus beta uh, y t minus 1 plus sum of i 1 to 4 in this case uh, theta i y t minus i how many legs should be added that depends that whether you are AIC, quarterly data, monthly data, annual data, and so on. So, if you have this, uh, okay, for example, uh, just a minute, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So, now in this case, you see series is non stationary, autocorrelation is not decaying. When we apply, uh, uh, when we uh, uh, do unit root testing, yt, delta yt is regressed on yt minus 1 this is first lag basically this is investment variable difference of investment is regressed on lag of investment and four lags of investment delta yt uh, minus 1 delta yt minus 2 delta yt minus 3 we are going to test this value this t minus 3.3 is it uh, okay uh, augmented equal folder test is always low tail because alternative hypothesis is less than zero so so critical value in this case is minus 4.69 minus 4.069 and your critical test statistics falls on this side so null hypothesis falls in acceptance region which means your null hypothesis is not rejected and what was your null hypothesis series is non-stationary minus 3.64 this is smaller than this so therefore it is minus 3 point so this is uh, smaller than this so therefore all these critical value all the, the, the critical values are below this test statistics it means this test statistics falls in acceptance region it does not fall in rejection region so series is non-stationary 
because your null hypothesis series is non-stationary. So whether you need to include four legs, three legs, two legs, one leg, or no leg, that depends whether your epsilons are correlated or not correlated. So we, these these must be uncorrelated. That's that's the basic requirement. Phillips Perron test basically don't have this assumption that C, uh, epsilon should be uncorrelated, and it has some different. Uh, uh, the, different underlying mechanism to test the same unit two testing. So main difference is in this case, you have no serial error correlation in error term. There is no such assumption in Phillips Perron test. Applicability, data with no significant serial correlation, data with significant potential, potential serial correlation. It requires lag selection, but in this case, that the number of lags of dependent variables so that series is not correlated epsilon. Whereas in this case, we don't have such assumptions. So this is this is basically more robust to serial correlation. So if you think that serial correlation is not going to be addressed, there is an issue of serial correlation. Then I'll I'll this is my opinion. Then go for Phillips Perron test. And if you think that there is no issue of serial correlation. You may go for this one, or you may you should apply both, and then you 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 can better judge. So in this case, I have already mentioned. So if agree, uh, if both agree that there is unit two, obviously there seems unit two. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you can have this drift trend model, and you can see phi three that whether this uh, beta two and beta equal to zero. If this is the case. And this null hypothesis is accepted. It means its B naught is not zero, so you you should move here. If it is rejected, then you have to go here. And if in this case B naught is zero, it means you have to go for pure random walk. If it is accepted, you have to go with uh, drift parameter. So ta mu ta 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 statistics. If this is B two is Zero. So these these are the three statistics we use. Determining so uh, whether should you should use constant time trend or not. So this is this is art and uh, at the same time statistical tests which will guide you. So what should be the optimal leg length? You can use Schwarz criterion. I prefer Schwarz. You may use a Kai criterion. You may may use Hanan Quinn criterion and Phi and Tau Tau statistics. Three strategies. First of all, always have eyeball data and correlograms, whether they indicate non-stationarity, stationarity, and then if it's it's there, then then go for uh, unit root testing as well, and uh, augmented decuplo test or Phillips Perron test or some other test like KPSS, which has not discussed here. So then then you can you if all these things support your hypothesis that series is stationary or series is non-stationary you can you can proceed accordingly so this is real gdp uh, 2000 uh, uh, prices so this is non-stationary then we take its first difference and first difference seems stationary so we we think that series has become stationary after taking first difference general to specific approach what is general to specific approach instead of testing okay if you have uh, uh, so i am i am not discussing here general to specific specific to general that is delta yt so so how many legs we should include of this delta yt theta 1 theta 2 we have just calculated so one one aspect is we for example if it's quarterly data we should include 12 legs in at first stage and then we keep on reducing that will be g2s but if we keep on adding one by one that will be S to G, so so there are there are pros and cons of both. That's not, it's not appropriate uh, place to discuss these things. If you have multiple unit two tests, you test and you come across you take first difference, but series is still station non stationary. You you have to go for second difference stationary. So what's better? That for example, if you think that this series may be second difference stationary, apply this equation. No, if beta two is zero. If beta two is zero, and then you may conclude that uh, uh, if beta one uh, is zero, if beta one is zero, sorry, if this is the case, it means we are testing the coefficient of delta y t minus one after taking the first difference of the series. If this is zero, it means series is second difference stationary because null hypothesis is non-stationary. It means 
series at first difference is still non-stationary. So you have to take the second difference. If beta 1 does differ from 0, if beta 1 does differ from 0, it means this series is delta yt is stationary. So whether delta yt is stationary, then you can test whether beta 2 is 0. If beta 2 is 0 is rejected, it means yt minus 1 is uh, stationary. If beta 2 is equal to 0 is not rejected, it means series is stationary. So, it, or you can you can test uh, from this equation that if beta 1 is non-zero, this is non-zero, it is less than 0 and this is 0, it means y, delta yt minus 1 is stationary but yt minus 1 is not stationary. If both are 0, uh, both are less than 0, it means series is stationary at level. If this is non-zero, if this is equal to 0, it means station, series is stationary at first difference. So, you have to take second difference. I don't have seen any uh, cases where series is uh, in economics. We have to go for third difference. We have to go for third difference. So, please keep on watching. In next, uh, in one video, I'll try to explain uh, this delta yt and why those legs are added. DQ Fuller test and augmented DQ Fuller test derivation. and I shall also explain this unit root testing using R, both libraries using uh, URCA and, and other library for cost time T series. Thank you for watching. Take care.